Hey, what's up? It's Randy, and this is the Mayono PD100X Dynamic Microphone. Now, I've been using this for a few weeks now and really putting it through its paces, and I've got a few things that I really like about this microphone and a couple of things that make it uh, a little bit hard for me to recommend as a microphone that I think you should purchase. Let's talk really quickly about the things that I really like and dislike about this microphone. Just get that right out of the way. Number one that I do like is that this is a sub $60 US microphone. I believe it's on sale for $49 right now, which is really inexpensive. Number two, this is an XLR and USB combination microphone, which means you can get started with just a USB cable. Number three, dimmable lights. You can actually program these lights. You can dim them. It's not just an on or off, just a little pop of color behind the white. I really like that. And let's chat about a couple things that I don't really love about this microphone. Number one is as you're turning up the volume on this microphone, it's very easy to touch the mute button, which is like one of those kind of capacitive touch buttons. You don't really have to touch it. It'll mute on you, which it's kind of annoying. And the second thing is the USB signal doesn't sound as good as the XLR signal. I expected this. I'm going to break this down for you a little bit later, but ah, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not my favorite thing in the world. Now the PD100X also comes with the Mayono Link software, which is actually quite useful. And this is one of the reasons why I like this microphone. There's some basic functions here. You can mute, adjust your gain, adjust your headphone volume. You can change through a couple different settings here. This is the deep setting. This is the original setting. This is the neutral setting. And this is the legacy setting. And these are pretty, like they're not changing too much of the signal, which is quite nice. They're pretty user-friendly for people who are getting started in audio. You can also toggle the RGB on and off, change the brightness, go through a couple of different modes here. You can't change to any RGB color with this, which I was a little bit bummed. I thought maybe the rainbow mode would do that, but that's actually just cycling through them. Now they also have an advanced tab here, which I really like. So again, you get gain control, headphone control, and then you get some custom EQ curves. Now working our way down here, we have a limiter, we have a compressor, and we have a noise reduction. So I'm just going to turn that up to like seven or eight. Yeah. So you can hear that's getting rid of a lot of that background noise. It's actually pretty cool. And one thing I really do like about having an app like this is if you're doing Google meet calls or zoom calls for work or anything like that, and you want to apply some basic effects to your microphone, this is a really great option to do that. Now you do need to use the USB mode to be able to take advantage of these effects. It will do nothing to your XLR signal. If you were to not have something like this, you'd have to use a third party program like OBS. This is nice that it's just standalone and basically just applies the effects to your microphone. Subscribing is just as important as putting syrup on your waffles. So you better do it. Subscribe and stay connected. Subscribing is just as important as putting syrup on your waffles. So you better do it. Subscribe and stay connected. Waffles are in fact better than pancakes. If that's something that you disagree with, I just don't think that you and I can be friends. It's I'm sorry, I love you. I just don't think we can do it. Waffles are in fact better than pancakes. If that's something that you disagree with, I just don't think that you and I can be friends. It's I'm sorry, I love you. I just don't think we can do it. Okay, this brings me to my first issue with this microphone. Now, I was using this mic for about three weeks before starting to collect my thoughts for this video. And I was consistently using it in XLR mode and I was beyond stoked. I was ready to come on here and say, this is a fantastic microphone. I think that you should definitely buy it. But this is where things got interesting. So I plugged in the USB cable, plugged my headphones into here. This is clipping, check, check, check. I start to clip. And then I was thinking, ooh, do you hear that clipping? Ooh, that like it's clipping, ooh, but it's not on the display. So I bring that back down. Ooh, I'm at like nine. Listen, listen, it's still clipping. We're hearing that, right? It is definitely clipping. Ooh, check, check, check. It's like it's physically clipping the microphone, but that doesn't make sense because when I record both USB and XLR, the XLR version doesn't clip. Like right now, I'm looking at my meters and they're definitely not clipping on XLR and I know the signal is clear. So this leads me to believe that there's something in the USB only processing chain that is causing some sort of clipping regardless of where your gain is set. Oh, this is frustrating because I really had a strong opinion of the XLR signal on this and I think the USB signal is, I'm gonna go ahead and say unusable. Here's my reasoning for that and why I'd say unusable. You could just say, well, back off the microphone like I'm doing right now. There, I'm backed off the microphone, I'm, you know, Eight, eight inches from the cap, six inches from the capsule, and it sounds fine, right? The issue with that is that that goes against everything audio people will ever tell you to do. <laughs> like, if you have an untreated room, which I suspect, no offense, if you're buying a $50 microphone, you probably have an untreated room. I have an untreated room too. There's no, like, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to rip on people for having no acoustic treatment in their space. If you're in an untreated space, 
the best advice that I could give you is get damn close to your microphone, like right on it, because I'm going to talk quietly so it doesn't clip. You get a really good signal if you just talk close. You get good signal to noise ratio. And this is like the best way to improve a crappy quality room is by getting nice and close to that mic. The challenge now is you can't do that. So I don't know what to say about the USB signal on this. I'm really disappointed. If you're using this as an XLR microphone, it's great. It's $59. Perfect. Lovely. Let's do a quick test of the Plosis. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. I don't like how it handles wind noise. Peter Piper, like, whoa, 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 whoa. And with the grill off, Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. The metal grill actually handles this pretty well. I don't love the sound of this for how wind, whoa, okay, on that either, how wind passes this. Here is a more expensive pop filter from another microphone. Check, check, check. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. Peter Piper packed a pack of pickled peppers. And for sibilance, I think this sounds pretty nice. I have a pretty sibilant voice. I usually have to run deessers in every video that I produce just because I'm a little bit essy. Uh, this microphone sounds pretty good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. And let's talk quickly about the keyboard rejection here. This is with a Apple, I don't know what you call this and typing away, hello, hello, this is me talking to my friends at work, hello, how's your day going? This is my keyboard, do you hear it? Probably. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the build quality of this microphone. So to me, this feels like it's $50, and I think that's kind of the best way to describe it. The volume knob on here feels very, very wiggly and doesn't inspire confidence. I'm also not a massive fan, as I mentioned, of the capacitive touch buttons. I just find them way too easy to touch. Things that do feel good on the build though, the yoke feels awesome. The knob on the yoke feels pretty good too. And the whole windscreen assembly feels really nice actually. Oh yeah, and also the ports. The ports feel really good too. Putting the XLR in, it feels awesome. The headphone port feels really good. Everything feels really nice and snug. It's awesome. Okay, so here's the question. Would I recommend this microphone to a friend? And I think I'd have to say no. And the reason being is because a lot of the features that I really like about this microphone that I think make it step up above others in the sort of $60 price point is things that you're able to use with the USB signal, the dimmable lights. I love that. The app. I love that. Those are all great things. The noise reduction, the noise reduction, rejection, noise rejection. Why can't I say that? Oh my God. Noise rejection. Uh, it's great to have. Again, that is a USB only feature. I have to evaluate this as an XLR microphone. And I think that there are better options at this price point for just solely an XLR microphone. Anyways, if you want suggestions on other microphones that you could look at, hit me up in the comments down below. I live in the comments. It's the first thing I do every day as I log in and I check my YouTube comments and I respond to people. So hit me up and uh, let's chat.